Hi there, everybody. This is Bruce again, and welcome to the fourth lesson in this series. We already know that certain materials are able to conduct electrical charge freely through them. They are called conductors. Materials such as gold, copper, aluminium, and even graphite are good conductors of electrical charge. Yet certain materials such as rubber, wood, and plastics are unable to allow electrical charge to pass through them. They are known as insulators. In today's lesson, we will develop a theory which will allow us to explain why certain materials are able to conduct electrical charge. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use the model of metallic bonding to explain how metals conduct electricity, and classify materials as conductors or insulators. What is a theory or a model in science? Remember that a theory or a model is something that we use to help us understand a scientific phenomenon. It is not a fact. It is merely an explanation or description that will assist us in developing that fact. Can a current pass through any type of material? We can find this out by setting up an electric circuit which includes a piece of the material that we want to test as an electrical conductor. I have placed a light bulb in the circuit so that when the material is a good conductor, the light bulb will glow. In this opening or gap is where I will connect the material that I will be testing. If the material is a poor conductor, then the light bulb will glow dimly. But if the material does not allow electric current to pass through it, the light bulb will not glow at all. I will limit my selection to copper wire, graphite, or what is better known as pencil lead, and a piece of nylon fishing line. A solution of table salt in water, and a solution of sugar in water. It would be a good idea if you could carry out more tests on a wider range of materials to see which materials are good conductors of electricity. However, let's use the materials we have at present and record the results. Here is my first material. I've attached copper wire between the gap and I will now close the switch. Notice that the bulb is glowing brightly. So, to answer the question, does copper conduct electric current? The answer is yes. Here is my second material. It's nylon fishing line. I now close the switch. Notice that the light bulb is not glowing. So does nylon fishing line conduct electric current? The answer there is no. Here is our third material, which is a piece of graphite, which is commonly known as pencil lead. I will now close the switch. Notice that the bulb is glowing brightly. The answer here is yes, the graphite will conduct electric current. I've now placed two conducting leads into my solution of table salt. I will now close the switch and notice that the bulb is glowing. Yes, table salt is a conductor of electricity. Here are my two conducting leads, but this time into a solution of sugar in water. Let me close the switch. Notice that we do not have any light from the light bulb. So the answer to this one is no. So after this, what can we conclude from this experiment? Firstly, some materials like nylon and sugar solution do not conduct electrical current, while others do. Secondly, those materials that conduct electric current must have charge inside them which is able to move when connected to a battery in a circuit. So there are charges that are free to move inside the salt solution, the graphite, and inside the copper wire. These are called free charges. There are no free charges inside the nylon or sugar solution. These charges inside the materials are not free to move. Now let's use this conclusion to define insulators. We know that materials that are unable to conduct a current are called insulators. From our experiment, we can say that insulators have no free charge within them. 
Let us now concentrate on the materials that are able to conduct electric current. In particular, let us find out how charges are able to pass through the conductor. Like this piece of copper wire. Metals are good conductors of electric current. Apart from silver and gold, copper conducts the current the best. That is why copper is used for the mains cables in houses and all kinds of different motors found in domestic appliances, computers and telephone wire. Thick copper strips are used for lightning conductors on tall buildings like church spires. The cable has to be thick enough so that it can carry a large current away without melting. Let us now see how the metallic bond theory explains to us how copper conducts electrical charge. A piece of copper wire consists of many millions of copper atoms packed closely together. This arrangement of atoms is called a lattice. The copper atoms are packed so closely together that the energy levels of their outermost or valence electrons overlap with each other. The innermost electrons are held tightly to the individual atoms, but each copper atom has one or two outermost electrons which are held rather loosely. These valence electrons can break free from the atoms. They can move around freely within the metal. The electrons are negatively charged. So when an atom loses an electron, it is left with an excess of positive charge. The atom is now called a cation, which simply means that it is a small positively charged particle. So inside the copper metal, there is a lattice of positively charged ions or cations surrounded by an envelope of free moving electrons. The cations can only vibrate around the central position, but the free electrons can move randomly around from positive ion to positive ion. We describe this arrangement as an arrangement of closely packed cations surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. We believe that all metals have the same type of structure. What happens when copper wire is connected between the positive and negative terminals of a battery? While I am busy fastening this piece of copper wire into our electric circuit, I want you to think about what happens when electric current passes through the copper wire in terms of how the particles inside the copper wire behave. Let's now investigate what happens to copper wire when it's connected in the circuit by looking at an animated model. The free electrons are repelled by the negative terminal and attracted to the positive one. The positive terminal of the cell removes electrons from the conductor and as it does this, the negative terminal supplies exactly the same number of electrons to the wire. The electrons still move randomly, but they will all now move slowly away from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal, that is, in the same direction through the wire. When the switch is closed, the bulb lights up immediately because charge is flowing and there is an electric current. This happens because as soon as the battery is connected in the circuit, electrons are pushed away from the negative end of the battery, through the circuit, and attracted to the positive end. All free electrons in every part of the circuit experience the same force and they begin to move simultaneously. Using a model, let's now look at the effect of the electrons moving in slow motion. As a free electron moves towards the positive terminal of the battery, the copper atom that has lost that electron becomes positively charged. The atom next to the positively charged atom cannot hold on to its outer electron tightly and this electron moves to the positively charged atom and towards the positive terminal. This causes the second atom to become positively charged. This process is repeated every time a free electron moves from one atom to the next. In metals, electrons are free to move from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the battery. But be careful. Remember in our previous lesson, we spoke about electric current as the movement of positive charge. So even though it is the electrons that are able to move, we still refer to the direction of electrical current through a metallic conductor as the direction of the flow of positive charge. When solving circuit problems, 
We don't have to worry about the technicalities, about what's happening inside the conductor. All we have to do is identify the direction of the positive flow of charge. Now let's look at our final experiment. A solution of copper chloride conducts electricity because this salt is made up of positive copper ions and negative chloride ions. In water, these ions are free to move. When connected to a battery in a circuit, the negative ions move towards the positive terminal and the positive ions move towards the negative terminal. Look at the bubbles of chlorine gas forming at the positive terminal and the discoloration forming on the electrode at the negative terminal. This helps us understand that negative charges flow in the opposite direction to positive charges. Let me remove the carbon rod from the solution. This was our negative terminal in our experiment. Notice the red-brown discoloration that is formed on the surface of the carbon rod. This is copper, and this copper metal was formed due to the chemical reaction of the copper cations in the solution. The reason why this experiment was able to work so well was because the carbon rod was able to easily conduct electrical current. Plastics, nylon and even pure water are made up of molecules in which electrons are tightly held. So it's not surprising that all of these are insulators. Let's now sum up everything we've learnt in this lesson. Free electrons are the charges that move through a metal when it conducts current. In some materials, such as metals, for example copper, charge can move rather freely. These materials can conduct an electric current. We call such materials conductors. In other materials, such as glass, nylon and plastic, charge cannot move freely. These materials cannot conduct an electric current. We call these materials non-conductors or insulators. In our next lesson, we will investigate how we can increase an electric current through a conductor. Until then, thank you and goodbye. Yeah.